Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. You're with Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. Please check the description box below to understand what this video is about. If the video is grainy or it's not clear or it keeps fluctuating in and out during the time that you're watching it, check the three dots menu at the top or the YouTube bar at the bottom in case you're using your computer or a different type of phone from mine and put the video in 720p or 1080p so that you have a good clear picture to work with. So I continue with the prophecy of the two most recent words that I received from the Lord. I received these words yesterday on the Sabbath, November 21. So they were both uploaded at the same time. And as I said on the previous video, these two prophecies go together. The first video is called Little Fires. And that was the post that God had me put up first, even though it was second. So that went up first. And in that one, God was addressing false prophets of today, the false prophecy, how it grieves his soul, and also some of the charges, the indictments, and the things that God holds America guilty for, which is man worship, constantly exalting human beings to the levels of gods. And then not only would um, this nation anger God by making for herself men into gods, but then also constantly lifting these men, raising them up and elevating their names. Um, and bear in mind, brothers and sisters, it's not only the constant striving that you find in the community, you know, I support this person, I support that person. Um, it's also, I think, what saddens the Lord is that the church would elevate the names of these people. Because when God says that you're raising up the name of a man, it's definitely through the lips and it's definitely through petition. It's happening through prayer. People who are not born again are not praying for their candidates. They're arguing it out in bars. They're arguing it out when they go to the golf course. They're having arguments at work or they're breaking up their friendships. They're breaking up their relationships or whatever it is. Um, just using their lips also to support their candidates. But when God says a person's name is being elevated until it pierces the heavens, that's definitely the church doing that. And the church all over the world at this time is as invested in what is going on in America. You would think that it was one of the great prophetic movements of the end times. You know? You would think that it was something that prophet daniel or prophet isaiah wrote about you know something something in the word of god something that's timeless something that won't be forgotten and yet if anybody has been watching this youtube channel for even seven seconds you will know that based on what the lord god has said and the things that the lord has shown me the things that i share here with with no hindrance. I speak them exactly as I receive them. Um, some of them are so painful. Some of them are so heart-wrenching, but I share them exactly as I receive them. And if you've been watching this channel for even five minutes, you understand that all the, all the waves and the billows, the striving is all the stuff that you see on TV, everything that people are talking about are going to be destroyed you know i could be poetic and say they will pass away but that's the bible's language you know the bible is so poetic at times and yet the stuff it's talking about is devastating it says oh heaven and earth will pass away and then right right in the timeline comes apostle peter as blunt as a rock and he says the the heavens and this earth are reserved for fire and then you're there thinking, oh, is that how they're going to pass away? Yes, they're going to be burnt up to nothing. So the first earth was basically messed up with the flood, just all washed away. And then God said, I won't do it that way again. And then everyone breathed a sigh of relief. And then you start studying the scripture and you realize that just because God said he won't use water again, didn't rule out fire. So America shall pass away. 
In the last prophecy, the Lord said to America that you are not a maiden anymore, which means a young girl growing up. Innocent. He said you are not even a young woman anymore, which means a girl who has passed the cusp of girlhood and is now showing all the signs of flowering and turning into a woman. He said you're not even a mature adult woman, which is when a woman is in full possession of all the things that make her beautiful, that make her a woman. He said no. You're an old maid. You've passed the flower of youth. You've passed the flower of maturity. And you're now aged. And you're at your end. And yet if you see the passion and the interest in the way that human beings are expending energy, Christians especially, globally, you would think that something eternal was going on. And the way that God says that his name is constantly invoked and drawn into this transient, passing, momentary thing that America is going through. It's incredible. So let's go to the prophecy. The prophecy is called Ezekiel 13, Prophecy of a Great Fall, received November the 21st, 2020. So the heart of this prophecy is basically, it centers around a vision that I saw. Um, I started seeing little, a little outline of it. So mostly I saw a man, the President Donald Trump, the current President of the United States as, as we speak now in November, 2020. And then it expanded and became very clear and I was able to see quite a few things going on but I will take this prophecy chronologically and let's go through the process. So I was sleeping and then um, I was awake suddenly and I've shared that when that happens, then I know it's the Lord because people don't just, I don't know, maybe other people just pop out of a sound sleep, but I do not because sleep is great. So I woke up to the Lord speaking to me saying, America is at her demise. She is at her decline and the retribution for her sins will not be held back at this time read Ezekiel 13. So I got up and I read Ezekiel 13 and I shared that the Lord was castigating. He was um, strongly rebuking false prophets and he was warning them against seducing his people with false words of peace when he does not intend any peace. And he was also saying that they were misleading the people with lying dreams and with divination Divination is a work of using occult means, evil means. You can use tarot, you can use a psychic, but also it's, pro it's possible for people to practice divination simply by um, indulging in very strong yearnings of their heart mixed with being influenced by things that they see around them and constantly guessing. And this is actually something that the Lord has shared that much of the church shocker is involved in he says that um instead of using the word of god and instead of employing the practice of releasing your faith to understand what god is saying to you in the moment many people use divination and constantly go around practicing what is just really low level unskilled numerology and um other little pieces from Kabbalah and other religions like that. God will say something to you. It's not enough for you. You can't believe it right away. No, you need to see the same Bible verse uh, on a license plate or uh, when you go to Starbucks and you pay and then um, the, the, the Bible verse is exactly, you know, basically how much you pay 1125 is, oh, it, it means Isaiah 1125. And when I went to it, oh, that was it. And, and what the Lord says is that, um, is that this is a very childish um, level of, of Christianity. And I know that people will find that offensive. And I've always said on this channel that I am not the Bible policeman, okay? That is a job that I don't think any human being is appointed to. But one thing I am appointed by the Lord is to speak the truth that he shares with me. So sometimes when I give these little insights from my private time with the Lord, um, I'm just saying what God says to me factually. And this was not even a private time insight. 
It is something that the Lord has instructed me to put not only on this blog, but publicly on my Facebook, that people who do this will really find themselves as cookies crumbling in the hand of the Antichrist because the level of lying wonders and the level of so-called spiritual confirmation that the serpent, Satan, the deceiver, will wield in the end times Oh my goodness, you that constantly does confirmation and I saw this here and then, and then this number popped up and then it was the same number. The Lord said that you are like a person playing with a rattlesnake and you will be completely deceived because Satan will multiply your love for signs. He will answer that hunger for signs and images and wonders out of your belly. And this is exactly what God is saying here in Ezekiel 13, that the false prophets are pulling signs and wonders and storylines literally out of fertile imaginations and feeding them to God's people. And for their own indictment, God's people are not operating in discernment they were packing the tents and halls um, and, and just flowing along like a Brazilian wave with these things. And so God said, if they continue to speak out of divination and error in their own belly, he will strike them for their false visions, for their nonsense and their lies. That's verses 7 to 8 of Ezekiel 13. And I said to please take time to read the chapter. In that chapter, Ezekiel 13, the Lord also spoke of a wall that he will tear down, a wall that people trust in, but a wall that will fall. And when that wall falls, all the prophets who spoke of that wall as being a hope and salvation for the people will fall with it. So I'm, I'm reading Ezekiel 13, and the Lord is conversationally speaking these things to me. And then right in the middle, he suddenly says, Donald Trump will be killed. Now, brothers and sisters, you know, people losing their lives is terrible. It's terrible. I've heard so many people over the last four years say things about this person that is really, really boggles the mind. I don't know if people really understand in this present day and age how precious life is. I personally think that we do not because we watch so much violence on television and there's so much violence going on around the world and even right here in the United States that after a while it's very easy to become dissociated. What is dissociation? You simply distance yourself from even the most terrible things because either your mind or your heart or your emotions or all three just decide, I can't cope with this. This is crazy. This does not match my Walmart and my Target shopping life. I have no place to store the information about little children being sodomized in secret society groups. I have nowhere to put the fact that people participate in blood drinking rituals out there. I have no place to file these things. And so I push them away. So we as a society globally, because of the things we look at and because of the things that we decide to do with our emotional insides, many of us are dissociated from the idea of death until it comes to visit our home. Until death or sickness comes, people, I've noticed, are never serious about death and sickness. And so to say that a man will lose his life, there are people out there who might cheer but all I will say in this prophecy is that I've heard this from the Lord many times. And uh, I've heard it a lot of times. I just don't share it every time. I've shared before that I cannot possibly write every single time, every single thing the Lord says. The blog would be 500 posts long already. It's got 200 and I think 40, 239 or something prophecies on there. And that is a lot. That is a lot of information. And this is with me not always saying America is going to have a war or this and this is going to happen or I have seen this in this vision. So I share as the Lord leads, but this I have heard 
And, and when I heard it yesterday, I felt bad because um, what came in my spirit is just that, Lord, why do wicked people always, always get the upper hand? You know, I know David said in one of the Psalms, you know, I was angry and I was like a beast when I thought about how wicked people always succeed. But then I went to the temple, meaning that I went to church and I heard the word preached that God does not love wickedness and God will by no means tolerate the wicked. And then I knew their end, that wickedness will be judged. But I just, you know, I just felt like, Lord, why is it always wicked people that their plans are just zipping on, that the things they want to do just seem to happen? And, and why should there be an indictment on a person's life simply because of wickedness prospering? Um, and so the Lord answered me by repeating, that they would kill this man. Now, I know when you watch this video, um, you might watch it six months from now, a year might from now, and you might go, well, you know, it was a lie. He's still alive and well and playing golf somewhere. I, I'm not going to speak to that. I'm simply saying what the Lord has said to me for two years now. He says it over and over. Even when he was in the height of his presidency, the Lord would simply say that. And sometimes the Lord would show pictures I've shared those pictures. They're at the bottom of this prophecy. So make sure to check the description box and you'll see all the prophecies there. Um, so uh, when the Lord said that they would kill him a second time, then I saw this vision that I mentioned in the previous video and now I can go into it in detail. So I saw the president, the president Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, and he was standing on a pillar so it was a pillar with, with, you know how it's flat at the top and then it has the little curly cues on the side. So it was a pillar, but his pillar had steps leading down. So you could see the steps were leading down or from your perspective, leading up. And these were flat and shallow steps. So a step like this, step like this, going like that. And these steps were extremely grimy. The pillar was clean enough, but it had chips and cracks and huge chunks of the plaster had fallen off. But the steps were filthy. They looked like cement, but they were not. They were supposed to be the same marble as the pillar, but the steps were so filthy. And you could see, you know, when the floor is filthy and then people have tracked footprints in it going down. So Those very grimy steps. And he was standing on his pillar and this man looked so tired and so defeated. I shared in the post that uh, it wasn't until this election that I knew how old the president was. I didn't because, you know, when you see him talking and moving around, especially as he's been doing his campaigning this second time, I thought th th these people are old people, but, but this man is is like a energizer bunny and so that interest caused me to look up his age and he's 74 which is a lot of years but um he he looked every inch his age you know and he had this defeated posture and his his shoulders were I'm not slouching right, but they were just like, ugh. And his face was, you know, down. You could still see the face, but his, everything was just downcast. So he was just downcast. And I saw him at the moment when he was about to come down from the pillar. So he was wearing this long black coat and a black suit and I think a, a red or a burgundy tie. And he was about to come down from this pillar using these steps. But for the moment, he was still on the pillar and brothers and sisters, sorry the light is fading. Mm, we should be used to this by now. But um, the scene behind him was really something else. So the first thing that I noticed was these huge built up thunderhead clouds behind him, very tall, stacked up uh, cumulonimbus clouds, very black clouds. And it was nighttime, but the clouds still stood out against the dark sky. And there was burning. But in front of that, let me correct myself, in front, behind Trump, when you look 
into the distance, the first thing I saw was the U.S. flag and it was burning. So it had caught fire on all sides and the flag was burning, but I could still see it was the flag. I could still see the stars and the stripes, but, and I knew it was the American flag, but the flag was on fire. The flames were licking all across it. And then the flag was sort of semi-transparent. And so behind the behind the flag that's where i saw this scene of huge thunderous clouds and it was nighttime and there was so much going on in the backdrop right so if i just try to work from the sky downwards i saw these huge clouds and the bottoms of the clouds were red and they were red because there was so much fire on the earth beneath the whole scene behind the president was on fire america was burning these are not the little fires of the previous prophecy these were fully raging fires and so um skyscrapers were burning some of them the tops of them were gone and the tops of them were gone because missiles had hit them and even while i watched this scene more missiles came and it wasn't just one they were coming in twos and threes curving to land so they'd already been deployed from wherever and now they were coming in to land three at a time two at a time and they looked like sh like bullets they looked like bullets but they were not bullets just from the the distance that i was watching they seemed like these silver bullets and they were landing on buildings that had already been hit hitting them some more so this was causing huge fires on earth but then there was also so much smoke rising up in straight pillars from the earth you know when an oil well catches fire man there is just such a deposit of oil and so the the the, the fire is just so strong and oil fire fire is one of the most powerful fires that you can have and it releases this thick plumes of black smoke that rise like smoke smokestacks so the fire was raging on the ground. Couldn't see what was burning like that, but it certainly contained oil. And these smokestacks were rising to mix with the blackness of the clouds. And then this red reflective glow at the bottom of the clouds. Trees were burning, buildings were burning. I couldn't see what else was burning. But then in the midst of this chaos, there were people. There were still people on the ground running around. There were women holding their children and running. So I saw women running. There were people who were running to hide, right? There were people hiding behind things. So there were people who were scared. But then there were people who were in their element. There, there were people wearing the flag. You know, they tied the, the U.S. flag around their neck um, like a cape. And they were like, mm, in, 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 the, in the thing, you know, and, and whatever. And they were running. And some people had tied flag hankies around the bottom of their face so you couldn't see their face you know a lot of people actually just wear handkerchiefs now so they had the flag there and they were like oh and and there was just there was just a lot going on running hiding i saw people looting uh i saw people carrying like one person was carrying a very big tv but then one person was carrying food and one person was pushing a cart running through the streets with the cart and there was just a lot of human activity going on behind the transparent veil of the flag and behind the president and i said that i um i i did not know if the president was of, aware of any of this that was going on behind him because he was just in his own moment. Another thing I saw was people using Civil War guns to shoot at one another. So they had these really skinny rifles and they were like, pow, pow, you know, shooting at one another. And I could tell these are not modern guns. These are guns from the Civil War era. And then um, I said that I knew that this was America's future because everything in that, vis that, that vision uh, missiles coming from the sky and America just burning and on fire and that black and red sky I see I've seen it in quite a few visions and I've mentioned it before um, hatred among Americans and just the whole nation basically being destroyed and set on fire I saw that and then the Lord just shared these few thoughts that I will read here and it said that Trump will be killed they will not tolerate it for him to come back into public office the Lord has said this be to me before before this, I've just never felt the push or the urge to share it because like I said, involving myself in the transient matter of politics is not really 
is not really my interest but the lord has said this before that they will not tolerate him to return to public office um that he, he will not be given a chance to rise again and to have a movement behind him again um, because it say, he said that um, he, his presence is ruining plans that are bigger than him. His, his presence is disrupting things that were set in motion long ago. And then the Lord rem reminded me of several prophetic words that I have actually put on this blog um, to that effect, that they, his life will be cut short. And one of them is called POTUS. And another one is called America in Turmoil, Deep State. That was a new one for me, hearing about something called uh, Deep State. So um, the Lord also explained to me that the pedestal he was standing on is the office of the president, that it was once a noble institution, but now it has become trampled and disgusting because of corruption and pieces of it, huge pieces of what it means to be president have been fallen off or maybe even broken off deliberately. And now even the steps that you use to get to the presidency are dirty, fallen and shameful. So the Lord then said that 2021 will be a difficult and in fact the word he used is traumatizing year for America. He said that from the first month America will see damage and disruptions and the expectations of the American people will cause cause outcry, resistance and great anger in the country and that separation will occur in the nation and she will be weakened from within as a result. There is another prophecy called ascendancy where I showed, where I spoke about one of the key signs that God said would come to America is that conflict will occur. She will begin to tear herself apart. So the nation will start to lose cohesion. Her people will no longer get along. And he said that this will start from the highest office all the way down. They will refuse to cooperate in the making of laws. They will refuse to cooperate in, um, you know, in the executive. They, there will be refusal from both sides of the aisle to work together as one. And because of this, there will just be general destruction. You know, the nation will decline because she no longer has dialoguing and she no longer has cohesion. So that is another thing. And the last thing that the Lord said is that the false prophets who continue to mislead his people with false dreams, with motivational preaching, and with false prophecies, not only, he said, about this election, but also about their future, who keep telling them to put their hope in a man, in this case, President Trump, and keep making them look to a man when they should be looking to him, the father, he said that he will punish them severely and he will tear down their wall. Ezekiel 13 says that when the prophets speak lies, when they build up a wall in the eyes of the people, but that wall is not supported by truth from God, then that wall will be afflicted by many stormy forces until it falls. So the theme of this prophecy that is entitled Ezekiel 13, prophecy of a great fall, the key themes are that false prophets will be punished and judged as they continue to use lies and human presumption to deceive and mislead people and that the people themselves will be punished for allowing themselves to be deceived and for believing these lies instead of trusting in God. The second theme is that harm is intended to the sitting president, harm that will follow him even into public life. There are people who think that prophecy operates like pop tarts if it doesn't happen today, then it's a lie. I have absolutely nothing to engage such thinking. We really need to be circumspect in how we apply our minds to the things the Lord says. In ancient Israel, they were sometimes able to wait for 60 years before a, prophet, a prophecy came to pass and no one was knocking on Jeremiah's door or Isaiah's door and going, hey, you're a liar. But this is not what we do currently now. So I really have less energy for that. So harm is intended to this man. And I said that we always need to use prayer and intercession whenever we hear that anyone's life is in danger because this is the call of the church to intercede because the, what the Lord showed is that this harm is intended to follow him even into private life, that it doesn't have an expiry date because they don't want to see this man come back into power. The third theme was that America will burn. I've shared this so many times. I saw the flag burning, the nation burning, her buildings burning. 
herself under attack through missiles. And then the last theme is that the Lord said that 2021 will be a difficult and traumatizing year for America, a year of difficulties, a year of disappointed expectations, and a year with many surprises and plot twists. Please watch the video, Little Fires. Read the prophecy, Little Fires. God bless you. I am your sister in Christ, Celestial, and um, take care. Bye.